Hello and welcome to Business Analytics. My name is Hari Rajagopalan and I will be your instructor for this session. So we talked about the four different kinds of um, analytics and we said we are descriptive, but really we are now well into the predictive analytics part. So, but we still kind of, there's some debate on whether we are in predictive or descriptive. So for the time being, let's talk about it being in between. So statistical studies can be split into two, experimental and observational. The difference is that in experimental study, one or more factors are controlled and how the factors influence the variables of interest is what is being handled here. So uh, we are actually manipulating something. We're saying here is a variable that we are manipulating and it's going to go affect something else. That's an experimental study. In, in observational study, we make no attempt to control the factors and cause and effect relationships are easier to establish in experimental studies than in observational studies. And, and you know, we'll talk more about cause and effect when we finish uh, all the way up to regression. We'll talk more about cause and effect relationships. Now, right now we're going to look at something called analysis of variance or ANOVA. And essentially we are analyzing the variance. Remember, variance is the spread. It's the square of standard deviation, right? And, and so it's squared distance from the mean. Standard deviation was average distance from the mean. So variance is average squared distance from the mean. And so we're going to use analysis of variance to analyze data obtained either from experimental observational studies. Now there are three basic experimental designs, a completely randomized design, which we'll talk about in this lecture, randomized block design and factorial experiments we'll talk about later um, when we look at two-factor ANOVA. So let's, let's take an example of a completely randomized design. Um, let's say that we have three different types of assembly methods in a production environment. Uh, let's call them A, B, and C. And uh, we want to know which one of these three uh, actually produces more units uh, in a given block of time, in, in a day, for example. So we use the term called factor. Factor or the independent variable, which is essentially assembly type. So assembly type is a variable, and that's what we are investigating. Uh, and the treatment is a level of this factor or independent variable, or it's the number of categories in an independent variable. So in this case, A, B, and C are the three different assembly types and each one is a treatment. And what we measure, maybe it's the number of units you produce using an assembly method, is the response variable or the dependent variable. So our, what we are trying to say here is the type of assembly method affects this dependent variable. And experimental units are objects of interest in the experiment. And this is where we assign workers randomly. Uh, so let's assume that we have 90 workers and we are randomly as, uh, assigning 90 workers to these three different types of assembly. Uh, the assumption is all of them are equally well trained in all three. So we randomly assign them to A, B and C. There'll be 30 each. And that's a completely randomized design. There's only one factor here, uh, which is being affected, and that is the assembly type. So let's take a look at what analysis of variance is. ANOVA, what it does is it looks at whether uh, when we have more than two uh, groups um, are um, um, more than two groups in, in your factor, uh, it tests for the equality between uh, three or more population means. And the data can come from observational or experimental studies. So a hypothesis is the population means from different groups are not equal. Remember your two sample hypothesis test, and basically it's two-tailed, right? Not equal is a, is a two-tailed. Uh, but now we have more than two groups, uh, and that's what, so the treatment 
in your um, in your two sample is just is just two. There were only two treatments, and now there's more than two. Null hypothesis is that the population mean uh, from different groups are equal. And if the null hypothesis is rejected, we cannot conclude that all the population means are different. Uh, so remember, just because we reject the null hypothesis, let's say you have four groups or three groups, you can't say all of them are different. All it can say is that at least two of the population means have different values, and you don't know which one. So remember the example we used A, B, and C, we're saying A is not equal to B, not equal to C, and if we reject the null hypothesis, we can't say all three are, are different. We can just say, hey, there's two of them are different from each other. So it could be A and B, it could be A and C, it could be B and C. We don't know right now. And there are other tests to go find that, and we'll talk about that much later. But I just want you to remember this from the theoretical aspect point of view. Also, ANOVA has three basic assumptions. So for each population, the response or dependent variable is normally distributed. So we are assuming that things are normally distributed, the data. The variance of the response variable or dependent variable is the same. So we are assuming equal variance here. Remember your independent sample t-test where we had equal and unequal variances? For ANOVA to work, the variance must be equal and observations must be independent. So let's take a visual look of what ANOVA looks like. So here, the null hypothesis is saying, uh, you know, here is your mean and here are these three groups and the sample means are different just by pure random chance, right? Uh, there's only one sampling distribution if the null hypothesis is true. But if they are, it's not true, then we are saying it's coming from three different populations, and that's what this is if the null hypothesis is false. And this is what we are talking about in an ANOVA. So let's talk a little bit about how ANOVA is being calculated. Uh, you know, you, you have the software which is going to kind of throw you, give you a table and talk to you about um, the values, but I just want to talk a little bit about the background behind it. So we calculate what we call as the between treatments estimation of population variance. So between treatments is essentially we look at, let's assume we have three groups and each of these groups have an average, right? Um, and then there is the total average of all the data you have. So let's say you have 90 data points. Remember the example we talked about is we have three different assembly methods. We're gonna put 30 people each and see how many we can assemble together. So each assembly method has a, has a group average and there is a total average. And we can get that average square difference that's called MSTR. This is for a base, based on the treatment. So we're saying here is the estimate of your variance based on the treatment. And the other one is within treatment estimation of population variance. And this is due to the error. This is the estimation of variance, um, which is within your group, right? So we're looking at between the difference between groups, and then we're looking at within a group. And when we compare the two, the ratio between the two is essentially your F-test. And if your F-test is, um, that value, F value is very, very small, um, then these two, are pretty much the same. And if they are very close to each other, that means that the groups, the means of the groups are kind of equal to each other. But when the means of the different groups are not equal, then this MSTR, the treatment estimate of population variance, is essentially will overestimate the variance. And so this ratio will become very large, which essentially results in p-value being less than alpha and you reject your null hypothesis. Okay, so um, here is the example, um, you know, we pretty much, uh, here is your critical value, F critical, and you reject the null hypothesis if your F value is larger than your critical value, and that way your P value is less than alpha, okay? So here is the table we're going to talk about. Here is the treatment. Um, and you, you will actually, this table will be generated. You don't have to do any calculations. You just have to understand what this is.
So here we are looking at the variance uh, which is bet between the groups, right? We're looking at one group versus another, and that gives you the average uh, variance here. And this is sum of squared error is the total, um, it's er variance within groups, right? And so the sum of squared total is actually the overall, this is the overall sample variance that we would get if all 90 observations was one data set, right? Um, and that's broken up into, uh, there's the treatment and then there's the error. So ANOVA can be viewed as the process of partitioning the total sum of squares and the degrees of freedom into the corresponding sources. Um, is, does it come from a treatment or does it come from just error? And this will end uh, this lecture. Um, you can move on to the next lecture, which is how to do this in Excel.